One of the simplest and most common types of projects you'll see on a CNC router is a sign, and not just any kind of sign. The cliched insert word here sign, which let's face it, has absolutely saturated Etsy and Pinterest. And as an unapologetic Grinch, they are something I have avoided making for a very long time. But I have to admit, they make great starter projects for new CNC owners, so here's how you can cut out your own overly sentimental sign using Carbide Create. Now, there are a lot of ways you can get started, but they all boil down to acquiring a vector of what you want to cut. Here are a few options. 1. Make your own. All you need is a font you think looks good and a program like Inkscape or Illustrator or Affinity Designer in my case. Note that you'll want to make sure that you convert your text to curves so that they become proper vectors. This process is different for each program, so do a little Google searching if you need to figure out how. Option number two is to get a graphic designer friend to make you a word or phrase. This is great because you can add flourishes and other stylized touches that go beyond what you can get in a font pack. Option number three is to buy a vector. Not all of us have friends in the graphic design world, and that's okay. And option four is to just use Carbide Create, which gives you a choice of most system fonts. Additionally, you can add fonts in the local data directory. You can access this folder by going to About and then Data Directory. As of version 4.13 of Carbide Create, any fonts that you add manually will appear at the top of the list. I recommend making your letters at least 2 to 3 inches tall if you're going to be cutting them out with an eighth inch end mill. Anything smaller and you'll start having problems cutting out certain features. One problem here is that if you drop a contour toolpath straight onto the text you've created, you get no control over how it's machined. The outside of the letter O, for example, might get cut out before the inside, which is not ideal. If we create an offset vector from our text, we can pick each profile independently and get a lot more control over our toolpathing. It only needs to be a tiny, tiny offset to work. And once that's done, I'll delete the original text to avoid accidentally clicking the wrong profile. And now we're basically at the same point in our workflow compared to having started with any other method of acquiring a vector. So from here, let's make some toolpaths. I'll select the innermost contours first, cutting on the inside of the line. My starting recipe for an 8th inch end mill in wood or MDF is to run the router at about 18,000 RPM, feed at 60 inches per minute with a 40,000 step down. You can always adjust your speed on the fly based on how your machine handles it and the surface finish you observe. For plunge rate, I would start between 15 to 20 inches per minute since MDF isn't that tough. Next, I'll select the outside of the letters and here I want to stay outside the lines. Same speeds and feeds. To keep your letters from flying out when you finish cutting them out, you can use tabs or a strip of double-sided tape under each line of text. Onion skinning is okay, but you really don't want to count on it to hold your pieces in place. A thick onion skin is annoying to sand off on curved shapes like letters. I'll export my toolpath and get set up on my shape oko. Since I chose to set my origin at the bottom of my part, I'll zero off on the wasteboard. But since I want a little extra margin so I don't completely cut through my double-sided tape and touch the wasteboard, I'll put a sticker underneath my touch probe. This will cause my toolpath to bottom out ten thousandths of an inch above the wasteboard. Now, as I run the toolpads I've generated, you'll notice that the top surfaces can get a little bit fuzzy. This usually isn't a problem as you can knock down that fuzz with some light sanding, but if you absolutely must have the sharpest edge possible, I would suggest getting a downcutting end mill. Or, in a pinch, you can just reverse your text and keep using an upcutting end mill because the bottom edges of your cutouts are typically cleaner than the top. And then, after you cut them all out, you can just flip your pieces over and they'll read correctly. And that's about all there is to it. It's really easy to make some simple elements you can use in a sign or by themselves to decorate your home or office to express your deepest held sentiments. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.